With lettering properties, you have the ability to adjust the spacing for your lettering elements. You can uh, adjust the spacing between all of the letters. You can do it between lines of letters. And let's take a look at the spacing uh, properties in lettering and see what we can come up with. So I have lettering up on the screen. I'm just going to right click and go to properties. And now we are going to look not in the letters category, but we're gonna look in the spacing chunk. And so here, we're going to first look at just the spacing, those, those big three kind of here. That's what we'll look at first, and then we'll move on to some of the others. All right, so first, uh, we have line spacing. That's not going to show up unless we have multiple lines of type. So I'm going to add another line of type. Hit apply. And now I'll go back into spacing. And with line spacing, that's going to add space between the lines of type. And that's going to uh, measure it between the uh, baseline of the first line and the cap height of the other, of the next one. So if I add this in, and I can just scroll on my mouse or type in a number, hit apply, and my lines get farther apart. So again, where that's measuring, we have a nice convenient L down here, which is uh, hitting the cap height of the second line. But we're going from the baseline to the cap height. So that's what we're changing. All right. So now that we've done that, let's look at changing the horizontal spacing. So this will track out my letters. So I can add space in between all of my letters and track it out. So all my letters get a little spacey. Now vertical spacing may be a little bit confusing um, because you're adjusting vertical space, but you're not doing it between the lines of type. This time you're doing it between individual letters. So it creates a stair-step effect, effect, which is really weird when you have multiple lines of type. So I'm going to take this back down. I'm going to delete all of these. I'm going to do them in capital letters so you can see this a little bit more easily. There we go. And then let's go back in and adjust that spacing. So I'm going to bring that horizontal spacing back down so they're close enough to really kind of tell the difference. And then let's deal with vertical spacing. And I'm going to go um, quarter of an inch. And I will hit apply. And so now it is stepping up a quarter of an inch every letter. So the bottom of the O is now level with the top of the N because we've gone one, two, three, four quarters, which is a whole letter that way. And since our letter height is at an inch, that's what we get. If you want to go the other direction, you can put in a negative number. So the ability uh, to adjust the spacing this way is really great for you know, uh, smaller teams like a, a band or a track or something like that where it goes through. If you're trying to do basketball, that gets a little bit lengthy across the whole thing. Uh, other ways that you can use this is to actually put a little bit of negative in the horizontal spacing and that brings your lettering closer in together. So if you have one that's kind of spaced out, but you're trying to fit a longer word into a space for embroidery, that's always tough. Everybody's trying to put an entire novel in a, a little bitty space. Um, putting in a little bit of negative horizontal space can actually squeeze that lettering in a little bit. Maybe a little bit of uh, bringing in the letter width can also squeeze that in and allow you to get a little more information into a smaller space. All right, so let's go back in. Uh, let's, I'm just going to delete this and start back with something fresh. And we'll do, there we go. I'm going to hit enter to complete that. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. And let's move this up here and maybe this down here so we can see everything. That might work. And then I'm going to grab a different alphabet. This is an older one. The spacing was done a little bit differently. Um, 
you can see that this one might need a little bit of kerning work. It's not bad, but you could definitely go in and tweak some of those spaces. So if I'm looking at this, I'm looking at maybe that gap seems a bit big and I don't know, that could use a little bit of work. That could use a little bit of love. Uh, maybe in there. They all could just, well, and definitely that's looking a little bit odd to me too. So let's take a look at how we could do that. And we know that we could do that in the lettering box. Um, we can definitely go in and add those kerning marks and, and kern everything manually and adjust those. We know that we could click on one of the handles of the letters and drag those around and do that, but there are a lot of letters on my screen and I don't have that kind of patience. So let's find a faster way. And that faster way for me is definitely uh, going into spacing and turning on auto kern. So what auto kern does is it adjusts the space between all of the letters to be a percentage of whatever the height is. So when I hit apply, watch what happens to all my letters. They all adjust. That's ah, looking a lot better. And that was a lot faster than me going in and doing all of that work myself. Um, so AutoKern can be an absolutely great tool for things like this, where I've got a lot of pieces and it just is more work than I want to do. Okay, so this is such a great tool. Why don't, why don't I have this on all the time? Well, um, I typically only use tools when I need them, but uh, another place that this would be kind of brutal is when you actually want things to not have space between them. So auto kerning adds space between the letters. Great. What if you have a connected script? It all flows, so one piece goes under the next letter and goes on and goes on and goes on. Auto kern will add space between all of those letters and just really make it look kind of funny. So let's, for grins and giggles, change this to Artemis, which is a lovely, if you look, the quick brown fox jumps, it's beautifully connected. And now it is really, really not because it has 10% of the height in between all of the letters. So that's what I'm talking about when um, AutoKern may really kind of start to, to mess those kinds of things up. AutoKern is great for um, some blocks, some serifs, um, some sans serifs. It can really be murder on a script that's lovely and connected. It can really be murder on any of the monogram alphabets that you may choose because it's going to start to move all of those pieces that were so perfectly shaped. Um, so just keep that in mind. Also, let's um, let's go back in. I'm going to undo uh, back to here. If you had a, a bunch of words that were creating kind of a sentence, right now the space between the words looks a little bit large now that I got everything else kind of spaced the way that I want it. So that's when I might choose to change my word spacing. So if I turn this off, it's not going to use whatever is digitized as a spacebar character, a glyph that contains nothing. Um, and now it's going to do that as a percentage of the height. So I'm going to hit apply. Now, if this doesn't work for you, if this is too much or too little, you have the ability to adjust that. So maybe I bring this down to 55. It's going to bring those in a little bit. Maybe I need a little more space between my letters. I can bring this up a little bit. You have the flexibility to adjust the spacing in Design Shop to meet your needs, uh, whether it's the overall look of the typeface that you're trying to mimic, or if it's, I really need to fit this in this kind of space. You've got the tools in the spacing to make that happen for you.